May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. August 17, 2024, Saturday of the 19th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Why is it that you circulate among yourselves this parable, as a proverb in the land of Israel, saying, The fathers ate a bitter grape, and the teeth of the sons have been affected. As I live, says the Lord God, this parable shall no longer be a proverb for you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. Just as the soul of the Father is mine, so also is the soul of the Son. The soul that sins, the same shall die. And if a man is just, and he accomplishes judgment and justice, and if he does not eat upon the mountains, nor lift up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, and if he has not violated the wife of his neighbor, nor approached a menstruating woman, and if he has not grieved any man, but has restored the collateral to the debtor, if he has seized nothing by violence, has given his bread to the hungry, and has covered the naked with a garment, if he has not lent upon usury, nor taken any. Increase, if he has averted his hand from iniquity, and has executed true judgment between men and men, if he has walked in my precepts and kept my judgments, so that he acts in accord with truth, then he is just, he shall certainly live, says the Lord God. But if he raises a son who is a robber, who sheds blood, and who does any of these things, he shall not live. Since he has done all these detestable things, he shall certainly die. His blood shall be upon him. Therefore, O house of Israel, I will judge each one according to his ways, says the Lord God. Be converted and do penance for all your iniquities, and then iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast all your transgressions, by which you have transgressed, away from you, and make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. And then why should you die, O house of Israel? For I do not desire the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. So return and live. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm the response is, Create a clean heart in me, O God. Create a clean heart in me, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. I will teach the wicked your ways, and sinners will be converted to you. Create a clean heart in me, O God. For if you had desired sacrifice, I would have given it, with burnt offerings you would not be pleased. A sacrifice to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Then they brought to him little children, so that he would place his hands upon them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. Yet truly, Jesus said to them, Allow the little children to come to me, and do not choose to prohibit them. For the kingdom of heaven is among such as these. And when he had imposed his hands upon them, he went away from there. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection How can you ensure you are welcoming everyone to experience God's love, just as Jesus welcomed the children? Children were brought to Jesus that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked them, 
But Jesus said, Let the children come to me, and do not prevent them. Matthew 19 verses 13 to 14 In the Catechism of the Council of Trent, which was promulgated by Pope St. Pius V, this passage is linked with infant baptism. It states, Besides, it is not to be supposed, that Christ the Lord would have withheld the sacrament and grace of baptism from children, of whom he said, Suffer the little children, and forbid them not to come to me. This teaching clearly indicates one of the best ways that this passage is fulfilled today. Inviting even infants before they reach the age of reason to receive the sacrament of baptism fulfills this loving command of Jesus to let the children come to me. Young children do not have the ability to rationally understand love in its purest form. That comes with the age of reason, which has traditionally been understood to be around the age of seven. But children, and even infants, are capable of receiving our love, and are capable of receiving the love of God, even if they do not yet fully comprehend this gift. As a child grows, they learn what love means as they witness it and experience it, especially through the mediation of their parents. This helps form their consciences in such a way that they become capable of making their own free choice to love as they mature in age. But if a child is to grow into a loving adult, they need more than just a good example, they need grace. The grace of baptism is the primary source of that grace in their lives. It's easy for many to see baptism only as a nice ceremony to welcome the newly born child into God's family. And though that is true, it is so much more. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states that baptism bestows an indelible mark which remains forever in the Christian as a positive disposition for grace, a promise and guarantee of divine protection, and as a vocation to divine worship and to the service of the Church. In other words, baptism bestows upon one soul a gift that can never be removed and becomes an ongoing source of grace. And when an infant is baptized, it's as if this scripture passage above is perpetuated throughout that person's life. Because of this sacramental grace, Jesus continually says to this baptized soul, Come to me. In addition to the grace of baptism, we must all imitate Jesus' action of welcome and acceptance of not only children, but of every child of God. Though the disciples initially tried to prevent the children from coming to our Lord, we must not. We must understand that there is a real temptation within our fallen human nature to both withhold the love of God from others and to even prevent others from coming to God. Anger, pride, envy, jealousy, and the like can cause us to object to the conversion of others and to God welcoming them to himself. When that temptation sets in, we must hear Jesus say to us, let the children come to me and do not prevent them. Reflect today upon these gentle and inviting words of Jesus. As you do, try to call to mind anyone who you might try to prevent from coming to our Lord. Do you desire the holiness of all people? Is there anyone in your life whom you find it difficult to encourage to come to Jesus, to be embraced and blessed? Take on the heart of Jesus and see it as your duty to embrace others as he embraced these children. The more you become an instrument of the love of Christ, the more you will daily rejoice in God's blessings as they are bestowed on others. Let us pray. My tender Lord, you welcome all people to share in your grace. You welcome every child and every child of God to share in your loving embrace. Please extend that welcome to me and help me to accept this gift of your infinite love. And help me to become a better instrument of your love toward others, never interfering or preventing them from turning to you. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, 
and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.